So today we're at your cliff jumping to show a simple trick that using a little high school physics and a stopwatch, you can judge the height of really tall objects. So this is my buddy David, and for the sake of Instagram bragging rights, he wants to know how high the cliff is he's about to throw his body off of. Now thanks to science, he's in luck, because if you simplify Newton's second equation to motion, you get this. That means if you want to know how high the cliff is in feet, as long as you jump straight out without an initial velocity, either up or down, all you have to do is count how many seconds it takes to hit the water, square it, and then multiply it by 16. So if it takes one second, one times one is one, times 16, the cliff is 16 feet high. So if it takes two seconds to hit the water, two times two is four, times 16 is 64, so the cliff is 64 feet tall. It's that simple. So in David's case, we timed him at 1.72 seconds in the air, which means the cliff was 48 feet tall. And like any self-respecting men of science, we verified our calculations by taking a string that we had marked out with measurements, and it turns out we were within two feet. Now for those of you who think this is cool, but you just don't like math, I actually made a really simple free app, and I put it in the app store, it's called Cliff Height Timer. So all you have to do is just hit start at the start of the jump, and then stop at the end, and then it'll tell you the actual height of the cliff. Now a lot of people think that the heavier an object is, the faster it will fall. So we tested that. Fun fact, 10 pound bowling balls actually float. Now I weigh actually 17 times more than this bowling ball, but as you can see here, we actually fall at the same rate. Now that's actually great news because it means you can figure out the height of the cliff before you jump just by throwing a rock off of it. Now some of you are probably thinking, wait, so you're telling me a bowling ball falls just as fast as a beach ball? And the answer is that they do if there's no air. Now this was most famously demonstrated by Commander David Scott on the moon for Apollo mission 15. Well in my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer, and I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? So it's true, on Earth, air resistance can play a significant role, especially on lighter objects with shapes that tend to catch air. But for most solid compact objects, like a rock or a heavy stick, it's going to give you a really great approximation for how long it would take a human body to fall. At least for heights under 200 feet or so, because then air resistance starts playing a greater role for all objects as they sort of start approaching their terminal velocity. But what I really love about this simple equation is that it's incredibly versatile. For example, you can get a pretty good estimation on the height of a tree by throwing a rock up to the same height as the tree and then start timing right as the rock stops going up and begins to come down. With this equation, you can measure the depth of something you can't even see by just timing until you hear the rock hit something on the bottom. Or let's say a mysterious gaping hole suddenly appears in a remote section of Siberia, and you want to know the depth, but you don't want to get close to the edge, you just throw a rock straight out and time till you hear the splash. But what I love most about the simple equation is that even if you weren't there and the footage is grainy, it's from a bad angle, you can verify the height of your buddy's 100 foot cliff jump. And not surprisingly, according to some data I collected, 80% of all 100 foot cliff jumps on YouTube aren't. <laughs> Shit. It's that simple.